In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Discuss the journal entries needed over the life of an installment note. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. So if we see a discussion question or an essay question like this, and we don't know exactly where to start, we can start by just saying what a note is and then try to think about, well, what does it mean to be an installment note? possibly writing down the journal entry that to first record the note and then that could possibly jog our memory to go forward so we'll just start from from step one uh, what is a note well typically a note is going to be something that a, a company is going to do in order to uh, get money they're trying to get money they're trying to finance the, the the operations of the business so if we think about that the first journal entry to record any kind of note any kind of loan is pretty straightforward we're trying to get cash so, so the first journal entry on, on a note is going to say cash is going to be the debit of some something, let's say, you know, 100,000. And then we're going to credit something for 100,000. And that's going to be the note payable, the liability. So, and that, and even if we don't know, possibly this installment thing could throw us off. Even if we don't know what that is, we can, we could start here and just say I'm, I know what a note is and basically this is the journal entry for a note because we're going to debit cash and we're going to credit the note the note payable now <clears throat> what what often messes people up in this is first that the, just the term installment could throw people off and two we, we start to overthink the role of interest and payments and how many payments and whatnot when we first record the note and and notice we don't all that stuff doesn't really matter with just the recording of the note I mean, it matters later on, it matters with the negotiation of the note, and it matters uh, when we record the interest, but to actually just record the note, uh, it doesn't even matter what the interest is, or the life of the note, or the term of the note, because we're just going to um, record the journal entry, which is that we got cash and we owe money back at some point in the future. Why is there not any interest expense when we, when we first record the journal entry? Because we haven't, we haven't had any purchasing, we haven't used the money yet, no time has passed. The reason we're getting this cash is because we're renting purchasing power of money and um, and it's just like if we rented an office building so we don't owe rent on like the office building until time passes same with this cash here we don't owe rent on the purchasing power of this money until time passes therefore we don't record interest just like we wouldn't record rent before time has passed so this would be the first thing and, and if we look at the the note it's just going to be a promise to pay it'll typically be in writing you know, we, we promised to pay, you know, the note was for, we'd have the term of the note that's typically going to be there. So what did I say? A hundred thousand. We're going to have some type of life of the note. So the number, the number of years we might have, let's say five years, and it might be paid monthly or monthly. And this are just kind of typical terms that we're going to have some type of interest rate on the note. So that's typically going to be given within the note. Now, if you think about a note normally, we think about the type of note that comes to most people's mind most people's mind is an installment note so if we think about a car payment or a mortgage where we're, that's a kind of installment note an installment note just means that we're going to pay periodically and that payment is in, going to include interest in principal as opposed to most bonds that we think about where we only pay back the rent it's like we only pay you can think of the bond being more similar to, to renting an office space where we pay just the rent on the office space and then we give back the entire office space. Uh, the bond is the same way. If we had a bond, we would just pay rent on the purchasing power of this 100000 and then pay back the entire 100000 at the end, the entire principal. For an installment note, we're, it's kind of like we're paying back. It's kind of like we have the apartment building and then we give back a square foot each time period <laughs> back to the, to the leaser, to the, to the leaseor. And that's so in this case we're paying back some of the principal each time and paying some of the uh, some of the uh, 
expense. Obviously, we're paying the expense and some of the principal each time we're having that. Most installment notes are going to be made to be even payments. So the payments we make are going to be the same. We're going to pay the same amount of cash. And to make those payments the same over the life of this note, we're going to have to uh, change the amount allocated to interest and principal. So in other words, if, if we're making a payment and we're going to say that the payment is always going to be $1,000, obviously this is the math isn't going to work here because we didn't figure it all out, but if we're paying 1000 and then we're going to allocate some of it to interest, the amount allocated to interest in principal, if it, you know, if it, if it was 600 and 400, it's going to be something different next time, right? Could, it could be 570 or something allocated to interest versus principal next time for the same thousand dollar payment and that's the that's the point the payment will remain the same the amount allocated to interest in principal will differ so you don't need to when you have an essay question like this you wouldn't need to go through the math on that and kind of figure it all out to to make an installment note however you want to just explain what the journal entry will be and explain that the payments are going to be the same but the amount allocated to interest in principal will differ and it, you can go further than that and say, well, the amount that's going to be allocated to interest will uh, will go down as the life of this goes by, and the amount that's allocated to principal of these $1,000 payments will go up. Why? Because the carrying of value will go down each time. So it started out at 100000 After we make that first payment, the carrying value will go down not by 1000 but by the amount that's going to be allocated to principal. And therefore, the next payment we make is going to be 5% divided by 12 on a monthly basis times whatever the new carrying values is. So remember what, what interest expense is. It's going to be rent on the purchasing power that we have. We got 100000 of purchasing power. Every time that 100000 goes down, the rent goes down because now we're paying rent on something less than the 100000 The purchasing power is going down. So that's going to be the, the idea now to calculate the, the interest payments. If it's a monthly payment, we would take the carrying value times the, the, uh, the uh, interest rate, and then we'd have to divide it by 12 if we pay monthly. So whatever the time period is. Or you can think about it as here's the uh, yearly rate, which is always given the yearly rate, divided by, in this case, 12 to bring it to the monthly rate times the carrying value. That'll be the amount of interest and then the payment minus the interest will give us the amount that we're going to reduce principal by and then we'll take the principal minus that amount to get to the new principal and then we'll continue the process the journal entries are, are always going to be when we when we make the payment we're obviously we're going to credit cash and the cash is always going to be the same again it's just making it up we're saying a, a thousand and then we're going to debit interest expense But the interest expense is, is not going to be for the for the thousand. It's going to be some component of it. It's going to be part based on the 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 uh, the carrying value times the interest rate divided by twelve in our case, and the difference is going to go to the note payable. So the note payable is going to go down, and you may not even want to put numbers here to to, to process this. You might just want to put X's if they ask just for journal entries and don't ask for numbers. Numbers can help. But, but uh, just to give some example of the journal entries, this would be basically the journal entry. This journal entry would be repeated for, in this case, five years, monthly, for five years. And it would be the same. However, the, the cash would be the same, but the amount allocated to interest and principal would differ. The amount allocated to interest would go down and principal would go up as these payments were made. Uh, and then once we get to the end, once we get to the last payment after five years, then... Uh, the note payable amount on the books should then of course be down and go down to zero and we will have completely paid this off so note the difference between an installment note and like a bond there's no there's no payment at the end as there is with a bond where we just where we pay the the original amount out at the bond uh, meaning the bond we pay just the interest throughout the time period and then we pay off the original that's why the reason the bond payments are fixed is because the principal doesn't go down. The principal amount for a bond, if it were 100000 would be 100000 the whole time. Therefore, the interest payments that we make, if we issued it at par, 
the payments we make will always be the same because the principal is at 100000 The note, on the other hand, and that, that leads to us to have to make this balloon payment, the principal portion, back at the maturity of the bond. But the notes, on the other hand, we, we're going to be reducing the principal as we go. That's the point. So we're going to be making even payments the whole time, and there is no balloon payment. There's no big payment at the end because we, we have evened it out over the life of the repayments of the note. And so by the time we make the last payment on the note, the note then should be gone, and we don't have any note on the books, and we're done.